All right, well, we are in the uh, early morning hours here in Normandy. Sun is just starting to peek up over the horizon. And we happen to be standing in the spot which, in my opinion, offers the best view of Omaha Beach. This right here is Viderstand Nest 60. Alright, well, as I have already mentioned, uh, this is Viderstand Nest 60, and uh, I already did a video here uh, last year, so I'll put a link to it in the description, and you can see a, a little bit more uh, in depth what happened here at Viderstand Nest 60. Uh, so we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on that today, but I am going to show uh, a few things just as a recap. Also, the, the wind here is absolutely dreadful. Uh, it, it is just roaring today uh, so if there's a little bit of wind noise you'll have to forgive me I've got you know uh, the microphone set up with the, the windscreen and all that but the, the wind is just absolutely insane today all right so if we look here uh, we have uh, a few to Brooks up here overlooking the F1 draw here at Omaha Beach and uh, th these would have been mortar positions to fire on any troops that were trying to come up this draw. And you might see this fence here. Uh, they have sheep that they've turned loose in this area to kind of eat down the grass. And if we move along here, well, you can see the remnants of the German trench system, which is pretty interesting. Oh man, that wind is howling and it is cold. Boy, my fingers are about ready to go numb here. But anyway, here's the other Tobruk over here looking uh, or overlooking the F1 draw. Moving up from these Tobruks here, uh, you can follow this trench line and really see how it follows the, the edge of the bluff here overlooking the English Channel. So you can imagine maybe being one of these German soldiers uh, or, or maybe one of the men from the east who had been pressed into service looking out over the horizon and seeing this vast armada just bearing down on them. And I would have to think that at that moment they were probably thinking that they had done messed up. Now as I mentioned before, in, in my opinion this spot right here offers one of the best views of Omaha Beach and it was from this position right here that one of the most famous pictures of Omaha Beach was taken. Uh, it, it, down in the bottom you can see uh, you know landing craft and tanks and equipment and also barrage balloons. So we're gonna go down to the beach and talk a little bit more about the barrage balloons and the guys who were responsible for putting them up. I've moved down onto the beach now and uh, again the the wind here is just absolutely dreadful today so I apologize for that but if you would have been here on June 6th this place would have looked like an absolute mess uh, there would have been wrecked vehicles you would have seen wrecked landing craft uh, I, I read a news dispatch that said really the number one item that he saw along the beach was cartons of cigarettes just just lining the shore he said the next thing you would have seen was uh like paper and envelopes from soldiers who were going to be writing letters home and then there were like odd things like a a tennis racket and a banjo okay so there just would have been detritus all along this beach and later on in the day, another thing that you would have seen are barrage balloons. Now, one of the big concerns that the Allied planners had with the D-Day landings was German aircraft strafing the beach. 
that is where the barrage balloons are going to come in. Uh, they would have been sent up uh, all along this area and the idea is to make German aircraft either fly higher so that they could be more easily targeted by anti-aircraft fire or if they tried to strafe the beach at a low altitude well the wires on the barrage balloon could shear off one of the wings or they might rig explosives up and whenever the uh, the airplane hits the wire or hits the balloon or, or whatever uh, it would drag it up to the plane and detonate it and the men who were going to be setting up the barrage balloons here on both Omaha and Utah Beach was an African-American unit called the 320th Barrage Balloon Battalion and they are the only African-Americans to have landed on Omaha Beach on D-Day. So I've had people ask me before if there were any African Americans who landed on uh, Omaha or Utah Beach. Well, the answer is yes. They were with the 320th Barrage Balloon Battalion. Now, if you go and look up any articles or information on the 320th, you'll find people who will talk about how they landed in, in the first wave uh, at Omaha Beach. And that is simply not true. Uh, the 320th did not land in the first wave. It wouldn't make sense for them to anyway. Uh, there's this kind of undercurrent out there that I really find uh, annoying and maybe even offensive that if you didn't land in the first wave at Omaha Beach, well, then somehow what you did was less. In reality, whether you landed in the first wave, the second wave, the third wave, or on D-Day or D plus one or D plus two, the guys who came in here at Omaha and all of the landing beaches fought and served with distinction, with bravery, and all contributed to what happened here, including the African Americans of the 320th. Now, one of those African Americans who served with bravery and distinction here on Omaha Beach on D-Day was a guy by the name of Waverly Woodson. He was a medic with the 320th, and uh, his landing craft struck a mine on the way in and he was hit with shrapnel uh, in in like the the thigh and in the groin so he was wounded even before he got to Omaha Beach kind of ignored his own wounds and once here set up an aid station and really did some amazing work here treated as many as 200 wounded soldiers uh, he was recommended for the Medal of Honor um, and did not receive it and uh, it, it was reviewed later uh, but because his records had burned up in a fire uh, well he ended up not receiving a high distinction that he probably uh, justifiably should have had uh, there's an episode of World War II TV that talks about Waverly Woodson that I'll link in the description it's very very interesting to, to listen to his story all right, got one more stop that we want to make here. Okay, so... Uh, we're just off of the beach here in a low spot, so we got a little bit of a, a reprieve from the wind. And uh, obviously what we're looking at here is the site of the very first American cemetery in France. Uh, now in the days after D-Day, uh, you would have had uh, about 450 guys who were buried here, so roughly half of those who, who were killed uh, on Omaha Beach. And uh, the African American soldiers would have been some of the uh, the guys on the burial detail 
uh, which was a, a very important service, uh, obviously for uh, sanitary reasons and uh, for morale. Now there would have been, you know, men from other uh, races and nationalities who would have, uh, you know, participated in burying the dead. Uh, they also would have pressed uh, German POWs uh, into, uh, into service burying the dead here. Uh, but anyway, the, the military is a giant organization and requires all kinds of different people to do all kinds of different tasks. And uh, this, this was a very important thing. Uh, now, on the other hand, where it gets problematic is that, of course, African Americans were serving in segregated units and uh, weren't deemed to be, uh, I guess, competent enough to, uh, to be riflemen. Uh, but, but that was going to change. Uh, that, that wasn't going to, to last. And uh, as a matter of fact, we start seeing African Americans move into more frontline roles in World War II, like with the Tuskegee Airmen and the 92nd Infantry Division. Uh, I, I've covered this in another video uh, with the temporary cemetery, but uh, they ended up moving this, or not moving the cemetery, but reinterring the dead up to where the American cemetery currently is because there would be soldiers coming in, uh, you know, in the days after D-Day, and if the first thing they see is a cemetery, well, that is going to have a demoralizing effect. But yeah, very important service that these guys performed here. All right, well, that was just a little bit about the service of the African Americans here at Omaha Beach and also at Utah Beach on D-Day. And uh, I'm, I'm so thankful for the guys who, who fought here and served with distinction because the, the fight that they did here on European soil was also going to push the needle forward on equality back home. As a matter of fact, the U.S. military is one of the first institutions to desegregate. So I'm, I'm really thankful for what these guys did to help win the war and to uh, make this world uh, a better place. So if you haven't heard anything about the 320th, well now you have. Much to learn from the example of these men.